Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? It's your man, Devious Amar, coming to you on another Devious Friday. Much love and appreciation to everybody who is joining us live on Facebook, everybody out there on GS Radio Nork, everybody out there on Ustream.tv, much love, and 230 what countries, how many? 232 countries, we've been seeing in 2000, I didn't tell you that? No. I missed, I, that was what I, <laughs> I, I, I omitted that part when I gave the promo, but you got to be all right. Are you sure? Yeah. I get nervous. Absolutely. Okay. You good. I got you. <laughs> so, um, once again, I was just that was I was just saying uh, congratulations again to Humble Beginners on 12 years. It is uh, it is absolutely a feat to pull that party off every month for 12 years. It's bananas to try to pull that off because the transformation of the space is so spectacular that it's it's you know that's a job in and of itself so shout out to all the humble family much love and appreciation to you guys congratulations um big up to everybody at flow party we had a wonderful time and punch the baby powder party listen it's either elevation or humble beginnings we got what you need and i would be remiss if i did not um you know voice my condolences to glenn sound and uh, to Charles and his family, I, I, there's, there's not a lot you can say, except, you know, may God give you strength, comfort you, may you be pleased with them, forgive their sins, and grant them paradise. That's all I can say about that. And I think there should be information coming up uh, about Glenn's uh, memorial. I think it's going to be at the Terrace Ballroom or somewhere in the Symphony Hall situation. But uh, keep... And I am Marie Thomas's page because she is the one who is going to be coordinating that effort for Glenn Sound. That being said, it has been a uh, it has been I don't know if it's magic or just pure skill that it has happened that I have finally got this young lady to my right down here to hang out with me for you know devious fridays every time we tried to schedule something was going on and we were not able to pull it off i think we were supposed to do this the end of last year Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and Mm -hmm. we are just now getting to it but you know better late than never and i'm so glad that we have you know this this opportunity to sit and talk with miss tony bowens absolutely Absolutely. I, I, I don't believe in uh, accidents. Yeah. Everything is, happens the way that it's supposed to happen. So how are you, dear heart? I am actually medicated and doing fine. I know that would be both. <laughs> it's, you know, it's that season. I don't, Ooh, yeah. That weather outside is treacherous <laughs> on the girl's bones. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, and I'm so glad that you, you know, you what was supposed to happen got postponed. So, oh God, yes, yes. I, I actually too because honestly, I I don't know the extent of how I would have felt. Um, I was making arrangements to make sure that I tried to get in there as early as possible so mm-hmm. I could get out, sleep it off, to go pick up the kids. And, right. You know, I was making all. You don't even understand how my phone was just like beep 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 beep. beep. <laughs> And when they called me last night and canceled, I said, look at God. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, he, there you have it. Won't he do it? 
Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> now, I want you to tell everybody um, what. Where did the Coco Radiant come from? Okay. <laughs> it's really silly. I was sitting at my then job. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that I used to work for Verizon. Okay. And I was in the Cranford office. I hated it. And uh, wow. that's a whole other story. But at mm. any rate, I was sitting there and I was reading a bunch of articles because I was the only one that had internet access, you know, because I was from another office. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's another story. Yeah. But at any rate, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> I'm sitting at my desk and I'm reading this article about how um, the government can pull up your name and, you know, people that you don't want, no matter what your privacy settings are, they can find out stuff about you, this, that, and the third, da 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 da, -da, -da. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I don't want that because although I'm on social media, I don't really share a whole lot of my private life. Like, right. you'll see stuff about my kids, but not really Tony. Mm -hmm. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to change the name. But I need a name that's hot. I'm sitting there, bored, <laughs> and I happened to turn to the left. There was nothing over there. I turned to the right, and there it was. Johnson, what is that, Vaseline Intensive Care? Mm -hmm. That's where the name came from. I said, you know what? I'm going to just take it. The Coco. The Coco. <laughs> that simple, that silly, that's all it was. <laughs> and <laughs> that thing took on a life of its own. Yes. People like that's hot. People were hitting me in my inbox, calling me on the phone, texting me. I really like that name. That's a really what? Why did you change? That's hot. You should. And then when my song came, my my mm. song with um my first song with Joe Flame came out. Oh well, what name are you gonna use? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, um, I'm gonna use my name. Are you, you sure you don't want to use Coco Radio? I can't. It's not mine. I I, I took it. Y'all trying to send me to the big house? What what? <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I had to bore everybody with, you know, I had to stay with my regular name, you know. Because truth be told, when Tony Braxton came out, mm. she wasn't supposed to come out then. It was supposed to be me. Oh, Because okay. I'm the first person with TB. You understand what I'm saying? Her right. initials are TB. My initials are TB. I and I was really that. taking that personal. No, I'm really not loony. I really did take it personal <laughs> back then because I was younger. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm good. I'm over that now, you know. We, we share the same first names. So. But you know what? A lot of people don't know this, but the DVS, I stole that too. I did. I really did. It was a friend of mine, and he had he was using it in a very nefarious way. And I was like, you know what? When he kind of disappeared, I don't know if he went away to camp for a few months. I don't know where he went. But um, when he left, I was like, okay, I'm going to take that and do something better with it, a little bit better. So he kind of reappeared briefly, and I was like, you you know i stole your name right he was like yeah but it's all you know it's all good mm -hmm. i'm glad that you you know I, it was able to do something for me right so yeah i i i, I mean it worked out because y'all know what i was using before that so it, it worked out but that's where i got the idea so what were you using before that the voice of soul okay, okay. but i just changed the to the which is DBS, and okay. that's how I got DBS. Oh, yeah. You don't I, say DBS. You say DBS? I do. Everybody. That's because everybody. you act up. Uh, who, me? Aries, baby. What is she talking about? Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> It's not just me. But you got to be on Instagram to see the real act up. Because, see, my mama is on Facebook, so I can't act up. And I be I hate always having to make sure that I, you know, exclude her and my aunties and them when I'm cussing and saying all the extra stuff. Mm -hmm. And my little nieces, like, I can't let them see all of that. So right. it, sometimes I just leave it on Instagram. But that's where the real act up happens. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> listen. And the stuff that I don't even put up that's in my phone, Ooh. it's a problem. Oh, my One God. One night, y'all just going to wake up and be like, oh, my God, Antoine, what is wrong with you? <laughs> it's going to be a whole bunch of that. I'm telling you, because I'm waiting. Mm. I'm waiting. It's the mood going to hit me one night. I'm going to have too much free time, and it's going down. And then I'm going to call you and be like, what? Because, <laughs> <laughs> see, you know, when you have the personal cell phone number, yes. you can call the person and be like, you good. Yes. Like, are you, you know? all right? I see what you posted. Yeah. You want to talk? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, it could be like that. It could be. Look, it's it very just when it happened. Remember, you heard it here first. So, uh, <laughs> you is Joe Flame the first the first producer that you worked with? No, I actually worked with John Crockett. Oh wow! And Charles Gatlin. Get out of here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like years and years years ago, um, I met. Oh God. John and I go back like peanut butter and jelly. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe even further than that. Uh, met him at a house party that he threw one year mm-hmm. when he used to live in Irvington. Mm-hmm. The music was so loud that the ceiling just came on down. We party. Oh my God. I've never been to another house party like that what? ever. It was epic. So wow. that's how I met John. And I met Charles through. John, Mm -hmm. they were starting up their production company called Working Underneath, Mm -hmm. and I don't remember how John and I just started talking again, because you know life happens. Mm -hmm. And then he was just like, well, let me hear you sing. So I'm over the phone, and I don't even remember what I started singing for him. He's like, okay, well, come into the studio, which was at the time in Charles's house. And I didn't know that they knew Libby, because i known Libby Jones, and... (laughs) Man, listen, I, oh, a lot that's a of name people. I haven't heard in a minute. Oh my god! Yes, Libby and I were recording. Me, Libby, um, Gator, Chris. Mm-hmm. Um, um. Oh my god! Why is his name escaping me? Lord, please forgive me because he has passed on. Oh. DJ. Um, not Camacho. No, but him too. I've mm-hmm. known Cam- I've known Camacho longer than I've known John. Wow. I mean, it's the, I know quite a few people from years years back. Casio Ware and I. Like, I'm not just name dropping. Like, right, those when I tell you, like, these were like, you know, when we you call each other family members. To this very day, like, Cass is still my brother. Mm-hmm. You know, um, G- Charles is my brother. You know, th- those are the type of relationships that I have with people mm-hmm. um select people at any rate um my first song was on siesta records and it was called how lucky we are and that was a record label that was overseas mm-hmm. and then the label went and did other things and branched off into other things and that was the end of that um how i hooked up with joe flame was on facebook i happened to see that we had a lot of friends in common mm-hmm. and I'm like I'm looking at him like I could swear maybe I know him from the past because you know just like when I talk to you like I could swear that I know you from somewhere well anyway I hit him in his inbox I was like you know I sing a little bit you know blah 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 it's been years da, 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 da. and that's how that union happened I went over there he played like 15 tracks five of them popped out to me and I wrote the song in 15 minutes. We recorded it in two weeks. And then next thing I know, it was out. Wow. And that was locally. And I had never done that before. So it was very overwhelming. It was very overwhelming. <laughs> the response, you mean, from, like, everybody? The whole, everything. The response, the the actual fact that I was actually recording and it was actually about to be put out and distributed. And people were asking me for it. Um, then the remix happened. Um, one of the remixes, I had eight. Mm-hmm. Please pardon me, I have a cough drop in my mouth. That's okay. One of eight remixes happened for that song um, from Jeffrey C. Mm-hmm. And Jeff and Charles Dixon are friends. And unbeknownst to Joe and I, Jeffrey sent the mix to Charles. And Charles played it on BLS. Wow. Like five days after the release. And the song released on my son's birthday. So it was just, it was like, I was just, I'm <laughs> like, oh my God, oh my God. You know, like crazy, goofy, you know. <laughs> I own my goofy, it's okay. It's all right. And that's how it went down. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so. so have you only ever sung house music or recorded house music? I've only ever recorded house music that you all have heard. Um, I've been, yeah, I'm sorry. I love you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, because you know, you, when you don't know people and that's your only form of release is to listen to music and things of that nature. I was always going to have a radio with cassettes, 
with the dual cassette deck so mm-hmm. you could play one, record the other. Yes. So there I was. Mm-hmm. I was doing that with the broomstick. Oh, that's what you... Oh, okay. You know, and I would record myself. And I grew up on Tina Marie and, you know, all of them. I'm, most people... Well, no, y'all should know because y'all been on my page. I'm going to be 49 years old next month. So y'all know what kind of music I've been listening to. So I never claim to be the best singer, but I know that I'm not bad. Not at all. And, and usually... When no one's really listening, I really kind of show out. Yeah. You know. It's an Aries thing, too. Yeah, I'm kind of shy. Right, People don't believe it. Shamaka's an Aries? What? what? What the hell is his? Hold on. What? Yeah. Sh- Shamaka, can you see my face? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put your business in the street, bro. Sh- really, Shamaka? Yeah. I did not know. When is his birthday? April? I think it's the 14th. The of 13th? April? Yeah. Wait, mine is the sixth. His is the thirteenth. That's his is seven days after mine. That explains it. It does, doesn't it? Yes. It explains a lot. Oh, it explains a lot. It really does. Those outbursts are hilarious, and they're at random. <laughs> I have to giggle because I crack up. Hey, I'm sorry, Shamaka. I don't mean in a disrespectful way, but I laugh at you often <laughs> because you are funny. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. I hope we feel good after that. Yeah. <laughs> we all have to have a party together. That's gonna be absolutely. That's gonna be so a much mess. fun. Yeah. A mess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we need to do some of that. So uh, now, what what type of music do you want to sing? Honestly, mm-hmm. R and B and jazz. That is my. I can zone out and. I can get in with my emotions through R&B. And just, it, the, I'm a lyrical girl. Mm-hmm. And lyrics speak to me. Some of the oddest ones, they just speak to me. Oh, I got something in my, stuck in my lipstick. Hold the phone. Mm-hmm. No, but um, that's, so that's where my heart really, really lies. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I write, I don't write. I write as a poet. I mm. write as... Um, I just free free write. Mm -hmm. And I have to pull lines from pages and pages and pages of things in order to make a song. Because I write whatever it is I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it may tell a story. Other times it may not tell a story. Like the first Mm -hmm. song, I Am, told a story. Mm -hmm. Karma, it told a story my way. It didn't really tell a story from what I was told you know like it, a traditional story yeah okay it was basically like you know whatever it is you do it's gonna come back but it's gonna miss me because whatever it is i didn't do it to you you understand what i'm saying mm-hmm. because i always believe in treating people how i want to be treated i am that girl if you give it be prepared to get it back, to get it back, and you might not like how it comes back. Listen, because you know I've had this conversation a couple of times. Because mm-hmm. I'm the same way. Right. I am exactly the same way. Don't do it to me unless you are prepared to have it done back. And to me, in my head, people go, "Oh, well, that's petty. That's tit for tat." It's not tit for tat. I need you to understand what it was I was feeling when exactly. you did that. So I'm going to show you the best way that I know how. Yep. And again, like you said. It might not be the same way that you gave it to me, but it's coming. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a firm That's believer. FYI. In that. I am, oh, God. Ooh, mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. so many different stories. I could. Ooh. Listen, yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> With the way my temper is set up, I had to go seek help. <laughs> because, you know, I was headed for destruction. <laughs> and this is why I love her. Because we were sitting on the phone. <laughs> And she said something about anger management. I was like, oh, my God, you too? <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, I don't know. Is it, If there are any other areas out there, tell me if you also had to be referred to anger management. Oh, my yeah, God. You, <laughs> really? She did. Your daughter's an Aries? Get, boom. And she right on the tail end. Right next to Taurus. Yeah, but y'all oh my gosh. We, I'm a we March are. Aries. Yeah, I y'all got that Pisces type of influence, which is like a real mellow situation. Mm. April, uh, you don't want it. And see, but that's where I am because I'm on the very last day of March. 
Oh. So I'm right in the middle of Aries. There is no half and half. It is what it absolutely is. Wow. And I don't like try to say that like like I'm really badass because that's not it. Mm -mm. But I'm true to my sign. I thoroughly am. And I'm okay with that. You either Mm -hmm. like me Uh or you don't. For those that love me, you either love me or you won't. Mm -hmm. I'm really okay. I'm going to be 49 next month. (laughs) I'm so cut down. Right. (laughs) You a mommy? I'm a mommy. You have two? I have two. Um... I don't call him my step. I call him my son. Um, Because I've been with Mark since Miles was one and a half, two. Wow. Somewhere along that line. And he, we, he'll he be 18 um, in July. Whoa. Yeah, I'm his other mommy. Yeah. So, and I just, I just, I love him. I love that man child. Because that's what he is. He's 6'4". Oh, God. He's deep, he's, and he's just the sweetest, kindest, most humble. There, there are there are no bad things that I can say about my non-biological son. Mm-hmm. It, that's a good way to say it. Yeah. yeah I was. love him. I love him. That's it. I love him. Can't wait to see him this week. I, I know. Him. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> is he getting ready for college? Or is he in college already? No, he's not in college. Um, I think he's in. His, he's either in his junior year yeah, he's in his junior high school. Okay. You know, um, and he's just, I just love him. If 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 Hope Hope McGill, if you're watching, I'm not sure if you are, um, you know that I love your son. Just wanted to let you know. <laughs> oh, that so, is so sweet. Yeah, I just tell her. She's, we, you know, it's very rare when you'll have a relationship with, multiple parents yeah because i don't yeah. like that term baby mama yeah, baby I daddy that. i think it is so disrespectful that. it is and we are a blended family like honestly and i hate to sound all brady bunch ish but that's what we are mm-hmm. you know um she calls me and we we actually chop it up and we go on about our way did you see my live yesterday i didn't you didn't i'm okay. gonna look for it though for those uh 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 tanya Something happened with your with your live feed over here. I don't want you to. Um, it has an edit on the screen. But for those of you who did see, who did not see my live feed yesterday, and it was about what you're talking about right now, okay. except it was the other end of it because I was talking about when people break up, and you know they want to bash the other person, especially when there are kids involved, mm-hmm. and you bash the other person to the kids. Right. I don't believe that, in that. type of situation, mm-hmm. and I, I think that is the worst. It is the weakest things that somebody can do in a re- in or out of a relationship. Like if you need to bash that person to make yourself feel better, you this this says a lot more about you than it does the other person. Seek help, seek help. Yeah, because life is so much bigger than that, and eventually you're gonna move on, like they have if they have. Like you don't have to be petty. Bitter, right. angry, you know, all, all of those of things. I mean, because I could be petty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you understand we're talking about relationships, and I get it. We're going to stay on topic, but I'm just <laughs> letting you know that you don't have to be that way. Right. Just be grown about it. For real. I we mean. Know, we all get along better that way. Yeah. Maybe we'll Especially explore. People with anger management issues. Mm, that's not something that you want to do. Not that's not where you want to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> when did you fall in love with house music? Um, before it was called house music. Back when it was disco. Disco. I was about to yeah. Mhm. Disco. My mother, big influence. Like I, a lot of people don't know. I grew up in Hill Manor. Mhm. When it was Hill Manor, um, when Prince Street Projects used to be standing down the street. Yeah, mm-hmm. down the street. Um, and there there was a record store called Jimmy's Music World. Mm-hmm. And my mother used to live in Jimmy's Music World, and I have ridiculous amounts of 12 inches now. Um, you know, because my mother passed on, it'll be two years this May. And I used to, when she was here, 
the albums were just sitting in the basement. I'm like, mommy, you should just give me the records. I can go buy a turntable. She would never, 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 ever, ever give me the records. She's not here anymore. We had to clean out the house. Guess who got the records? Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and my sister mm-hmm. wouldn't put up a fight about that. She knows, you know, and she knew. So it was cool. So I, when I got my <laughs> Bluetooth turntable, <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I sat for four days and I killed myself listening. Cuba. You remember that? The Gibson brothers? Y'all wouldn't know. Forget it. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you there's people, I bet you there's people know. You wouldn't know. You shouldn't know this. You should. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, wait, you can't throw a name at me or a title. You got to go into the chorus. Once you get to the chorus, I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, that. That was, that was man, what? Listen. Oh. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, all of those. And, I, I'm, you know, I'm sitting here reminiscing. Like, there's a file in my, in my phone that says nostalgia. And those... Are the type of songs that are that are yes. in there, and I put myself through it mm-hmm. when I'm going, you know, driving and stuff, which I'm gonna probably do tonight, okay. and and just give myself some therapy, some uh, music therapy. I'm sorry, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Driving, you're, you're not gonna be doing that again, are you? No. Okay, thank you. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to ask you. Was that? I wasn't, I wasn't gonna bring that up. You don't have to. Did I bring it up the last time? <laughs> I don't know. I'm Where was sorry. I? I forgot. Okay. See, okay, what had happened was, for those of you who did not see that video that I posted that was totally dark, and I said, you don't need to see me. You just need to listen to what I'm saying because it was craziness going on. And is there a short version? I don't even know. I don't know. think there's a short version. There really is Okay, there's a person who got in my car and i wasn't really comfortable with the person at first but then we started talking come to find out the woman was in the back and she had wrapped up her whole head and this was the only part that i could see of her face but she had on like spandex and a tight top so i'm like how does that go together like i don't get it so then she was telling me she was a physical she was telling me she was a physical therapist so i was like oh okay well i went to physical therapy so she was like oh well show me what you was doing and then i didn't know that she meant for me to come with her in her house at one o'clock in the morning up in randolph new jersey to go and show her exactly what it was i was doing in physical therapy but when i got up there it turns out that that wasn't what she wanted because she taking a blanket out and putting it on the bed and telling me to take off my whoa 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 and i got on my lungs i got on my lungs and you think and you sit and we in your house now and you still got this wrapped up this is all i can see <laughs> no. List of things that's good that wasn't at the top. Yeah. So you know, sometimes I do dumb things because I think it'll make an interesting story, and that was one of them. And, and I was. I won't be doing it again, but it was an interesting story. <laughs> mm. It was especially after I had just got. I didn't know what was going on, but anyway, <laughs> we have digressed into two of my lives <laughs> real quick, um, which is not what I meant to do. I apologize. It's okay. It's, it's okay. Protector. That's the protector in me. Like, you know, I'm I'm one of those to a fault where I wear a cape all of the time rescuing folks. Oh, I really kind of shouldn't. That's why you and Bruce get over. That's why. No, no. That's... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, I had to tell him to take off his cape, like, for real, bro. Like, um, no. He's you you so, can't do it no more. I mean... You know, I I like I love Bruce. I love Bruce. Everybody Bruce do. Is he's guy. one of those people too. Either you love him or you hate him. It's it's really how, no how in between. Did you hate him. You gotta have that type of. You <laughs> have to have that type of sense of humor. First of all, that's that's you have to have a sense of humor because otherwise you are gonna be like I hate him. <laughs> that's that's and that's usually how people hate you. But I say if it, you though. don't have that sense of humor and somebody is somebody who always you know is trying to keep the mood light. Yeah. You know, if you don't have a sense of humor, you're always going to take offense. You're always going to, well, what you mean by that? And that type right. of bull stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, but no, capes running our family pretty much. But, eh, yeah, we have to put those down because I'm getting older. Oh, not as old as me. Not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm coming up on your heels a little oh, bit. A little okay. bit. That's a little something. Oh, okay, okay. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so you, you, we were talking actually. We were ta- we were discussing last night about you getting ready to do some more music. Thank you, Jesus. It has been a journey for me. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I am. Prepa- I'm actually. Let me see. There's four. There's four songs that I'm actually beginning to work on. Mm -hmm. Um, Lyrics done, tracks have been sent, melodies have been worked out. It was just a matter of me having to get in and record Mm. um, because I've been battling bronchitis since I can't tell you when. Oh, goodness. Um, And every time I get better, it comes back. Or so they say that it's bronchitis. I don't really know. Sinus infections, you name it, I haven't been able to really sing. Like, I have a tickle right now. Mm -hmm. But, um, what was it, two weeks ago, when I was supposed to come on show, Kisha and I, Mm -hmm. I couldn't come because I was man down in the emergency room. So, the doctor says, like, I still have, like, the cough or whatever. She says it's going to go away soon. So, at any rate, I made my phone calls and Tuesday... I'm going in to finish. I started one song like I, over the summer. Oh wow! I started, you know, because after my mother had passed away, I just wasn't mm-hmm. here. And yeah, I did the song with CZ, but it still wasn't Tony. It wasn't. It wasn't me. It was. It was him. You know. And now, I'm. I've healed enough where I can go in and record. I just need to be fed now. And mm-hmm. by that I mean be amongst other artists, other singers, mm-hmm. um, excuse me, vocalists and musicians and things of that nature so I can get the um, what do you call it? Like a muse. I need it. Yeah. I need it because I've been away from it for a long time. And I know, I know me and then I get inside my head and inside my head is a dangerous place to be because mm. I'm an overthinker and um, because I don't trust people I'm always looking at everybody with my third eye mm-hmm. so it kind of stops me sometimes mm. which can be a good thing yeah so Definitely. but at any rate the, the, the stuff that I had sent to me are from people that I actually trust okay and I'm actually excited I can't wait I, I so can't wait so you're putting together like an EP package or are they going to be singles that you're going to release separately or have you thought that far? Um, I believe they're all going to be rela- released separately because it's different producers. Oh, okay. Like okay. one is in France. One is in Italy. And three are here. So that was five, not four. Yeah. yeah. So how does that, like, you just get an inbox from somebody and they're like, I have this track I want to send you. Basically, that's... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just out of nowhere, you just go in your inbox and that. And I don't, normally don't really check my inbox because you know. <sighs> yeah, it can be foolishness much. sometimes. But something told me to just look at it, and um, I read it, and we just happened to just have a conversation, typing back and forth because you know time differences, yada yada yada. Right. And this person asked me like, "Okay, so what do you require?" And I was like, "Okay, well, look, listen, I have my own publishing, so we need to work it out." You know, and we talked, sent me paperwork, sent me requirements. There you have it. Track it, track in my, what do you call it, Mm e-transfer? Sent to me. And we transfer? Thank you so much. And now it's just a matter of me going in and finally laying the dang vocals down. I've been sick. I have, Mm -hmm. I have it all. I've been sick. And it's, it's, what? (laughs) It's not anything that I've ever done before. Mm. And I'm excited about it. So. I know that's right. Yeah. And you have the time to do it now. Yeah, because I'm retired. You know, I have retired people's behavior. You, I'm sorry, could you say that one more time a little bit louder for the people retired in the cheap seats? Retired people's behavior. Yeah, so the next time y'all look at me cross eyed about being retired, I need y'all to look over my shoulder. And this <laughs> it's fun. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm more busy now than I ever was. And you know what? And I was just, I, okay, I went to go visit the people that I used to work with today. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, yeah, you done. Do- I have, I'm nonstop. Yeah. All the time. I'm running, 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 running. Like, I, I don't remember the last time I got a really good night's sleep. I can't remember. Oh, I don't do that without drugs. Yeah, see. And 
sorry. That's Even the pain. with them. Yeah. I still. Yeah. Because you, you'll go to bed late. You get up early. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. you're running, 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 running. And um, I'm going to just put this out there. You know, I cut hair. Mm-hmm. Like barber. Oh, really? I do. I had no idea, but I like it. It's a solution, huh? Thank you. Okay. And so. In the shop? Or, okay. Legitimately. See, this is what I like about the women that I know. I'm going to put it that way. Because, I, and I always tell people, my cipher is the bomb. I can get anything I need mm-hmm. with, with in my cipher. You know what I'm saying? But that's how it should be. Yeah. Like, I, I my village is bananas. Mm-hmm. Like, anybody who's watching this now, you might want to get your kids into my village. Like, seriously. Because this is where your kids are going to prosper. Everybody I know does something not just professionally, but creatively. And they also have some other type of skill. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that in order to be prosperous, in order to, you know, keep a balance in your life, you need to do, you need all those things. You do. Um, that was one of the things that prompted me. I said to her with Verizon, mm-hmm. you know, I was still recuperating after having my back operated on. Wow. And then my mother passed away. And I had to go back to work, like, a month after she passed, like, literally a month after she passed away. And my brain wasn't even, and something happened with the children, and I had to leave. And I'm like, well, I don't feel like being here anyway. Just take me off the clock, you know, whatever. Oh, well, you can't leave unless your kids are going to the hospital. I said, hold the phone. Wait, what? And see, I'm very outspoken when I'm unhappy. Mm -hmm. So I basically... You know, threw the finger up and was just like, I'm out. Do what you want to do. I don't care. You know, and I grabbed my stuff and I left. He's going to tell me I can't go back on my... My baby had to go to the doctor. Are you serious? At any rate, long story short, retired on Tuesday. Went to school on Thursday. And graduated in July of last year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is what it is. You know, you got to do it. And I've been doing stuff makeup, um, hair, nails. I used to go door to door doing nails. Like I used to live in Somerset, New Jersey and mm-hmm. I would hop on New Jersey transit and I would come all the way up to Maplewood to the then Dyfus building mm-hmm. with my caboodle mm-hmm. and I would do all of the ladies nails in the building. And then make that $400, get back on the 25, go back down to the train station and take my butt back down to Somerset. Wow. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would do that I haven't heard of that like in forever. <laughs> yeah, I that is you. awesome. I, I mean, I got layers. Yes. Like for me to be sitting here telling you all this, you know, that's me divulging a whole bunch of stuff that I don't really divulge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. This secret squirrel right here, I'm telling you, like <laughs> you for real. To be a little, you know. I understand. I understand. Keep it a little mystery, yeah, you know, for yourself know and stuff your like that. Move. They don't really need to know that much <laughs> stuff about you. I'm just. Did y'all just catch that? Did y'all see it? Because I saw it. <laughs> what I do? What I do? <laughs> you saw. I'm sorry. I did it. Dang. Oh, I really put it out there, didn't I? Damn. I really That's had it. remorse when I did it, too. I'm going to tell you. What? I, ooh, when you, you put it out there? You mean what? Me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah My sister yeah. texted me. She was just like, you okay? I was like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Done now. Now. Then I talked to Copos and I told him, and he was like, "What well, are you shouldn't have done?" It. I said, "Shut up, I'm being sensitive right now." He's right, like, "Well, you need you to know. pick an emotion. You can't be a thug and then be sensitive." I'm like, "I could be a sensitive thug." Did you hear that? Did you hear that? He always be doing oh, the God, most. he make me sick too. Oh, see the stuff that he be posting. I'd be like, "He lucky. I this ain't the old folk company where I could reach out and touch you because oh. you need somebody <laughs> to put some hands on you for some of the stuff that you post." Is what I'm gonna say. <laughs> You really do. Yeah. yeah it be downright. Like, I, it, anything that make me blush is some, whoo. <laughs> be sitting there like, no, I be like, didn't. what? My new thing is, go sit down. Like, I can't tell you how many people's <laughs> posts I have put that on lately. Go sit down. And then I'm busting out. Like, you have me busting out laughing, acting like the straight fool in my own damn house because of the foolishness that I'm looking at. 
but I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So what's wrong? Yeah. It's 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 it's, it's a little everybody yeah. got something. All of us. Because we follow each other with the foolishness, <laughs> and it be some foolishness. Oh. I'd be like, oh. I I just know this much when Dang. I hate it when I'm in my feelings for whatever reason. Like this morning, I was sensitive. That's when I was told that I should not be, uh, I can't be sensitive and be a thug at the same time. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll be good at 10 o'clock. Until then, leave me alone. At 10 o'clock, I log on to Facebook again. And then I see foolishness and I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's what I, that's what I like to, I read other people's stuff. Yeah. I don't need to put my shit out there. That's true. Everybody else is out there. Some, they shouldn't be, but. Yeah. I mean, but I, 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 I really had to take a day mm. to sit down and regulate what comes up in my news feed and how. Oh, I've always been that way. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. I had to, first, the first thing that come up is like jokes and stuff like that, because I know the first person that I see who put something that's pissing me off, I, I need a buffer in between before <laughs> I say something, you know? I, yes. So <laughs> thank Facebook for the security settings, some of you, because, Amen, yeah. It could be that. <laughs> okay, so Tony Bowens for the future. What are your plans? Okay, I don't know if I want to. If I'm okay, well, let's do both. From what do you want to accomplish? Not in your family, not um, necessarily in music, but just for yourself. Like, what what is it that you now that you are in retirement and you can do whatever you want to do? What are some of the things that you want to do? Well, mm, whatever. Honestly, I just want to live. Like, that's probably like the most boringest answer ever. But when I tell you that my perspective on life and how you should be, mm -hmm. um, that's all I want to do is live. I, I want to emote um, happiness. I want to emote love. You know, I'm... I'm I love love. I'm a big lover of love. Doesn't always come back that way. Mm. But I try to put it out. Random acts of kindness, little silly stuff, you know, um, not for recognition. You know, I surprised someone with a cake for their birthday. They, these persons and don't know me from a can of paint. Put it out there. I want this cake. What did I do? I inboxed the cake maker. Let's make this cake. What, how much it costs? PayPal the money. Here, there you go. Now, you know. Nice. And she was happy. You understand? Like, just little stuff like that. Um, because it doesn't cost much. Right. You know? Um, and I do it not looking for stuff in return. I won't tell you that I don't get emotionally bombed when my feelings get hurt. Because mm -hmm. I'm very sensitive. Oh, God, I put that out there, Jesus. <laughs> But that's what it is I want to do. I just want to, I want to hook up my studio equipment because I do have my own recording equipment. I finally, I want to move out of my house and hook up my equipment so I don't have to go to anybody else's place and do it in my own house. I have like the whole giant set up. Nice. Um, that type of thing. And just, you know, be the best barbershop owner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Mommy, <laughs> wife, boss, you know. You could do all of that. Yeah, yeah. You could do all of that. Yeah. I like that. Just be fun and be free. That's it. In regard to things that are, and, and sometimes we get into this with um, some of the other shows that I do with the Freedom Team and my dude Cliche, when he comes out, we start to talk about, we talk about some of the things that are going on, you know, just in the world. And the one of the most recent things and I'm curious to hear your opinion. Is the thing with this young man in Florida, with these, you, if you guys don't know the story, you must have been under a rock because it's been on the news, this young man that uh, went to school, the school that he was expelled from and killed 17 people. What, I wanna know your thoughts before I say anything. Yeah, I can already see it on your, yeah. But it's kind of the okay now from what what is it about that situation that makes you make that face he's 17 he was he mm -hmm. is 17 right? no he's 19 he's Nin 19 19 mm -hmm. i often think back to when i was 19 mm -hmm. 
I want to know what in the hell happened? Why? What, what made life so bad for people that age and younger? I just had this conversation with someone. Mm-hmm. I don't understand how you can have that much hatred and anger built up into you at only 19 years. You've only been here. Now you have your whole life ahead of you. And then you want to go to a building and shoot up innocent people? For what? Did they even know who you were? Like, is this the legacy that you really wanted to have? Because now you're going away to the house of bigness for the rest of your days. If they don't kill you. If they don't. Well, they might. Yeah, probably they, gonna. They, they might, you know. Um, you. But what makes it so bad? It, it, it's sad. I mean, I was literally in physical therapy having this conversation with a the therapist. It's sad. You have an eight-year-old girl who hung herself. Mm-hmm. What the hell does she know about suicide? Mm-hmm. People don't know the finality of life and death i don't think the realization hits for him to be 19 years old to wake up and get dressed and put the ammunition in that gun and go come on now there was a um and this is i don't like when people make excuses for this type of thing and you know the one of the things that they did was they touted you know, um, I think he was in foster care and the latest foster care provider passed away and his parents were with him. And, you know, it was just all of these different. Si- exactly that face, because that's the face that I made, because for some reason and, and maybe and it's not that I don't have any either. Well, I don't have any empathy and it's not that I'm not trying to sympathize, but the way that the media trots these people out in front of us. You know what I'm saying? You, you're the first thing you do is make all these excuses. Right. But if his skin, to me, I believe if his skin had been a few shades darker, you'd have heard about all of the crimes he had committed, all and things. all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I don't like things. that. Yes, mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. I don't like that. At all. And what I what I like least about it is that we keep falling for it. And the reason I say we keep falling for it, it's not that we don't know that it's happening, but when are we, meaning us, people, are we going to get mad enough to make 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 these changes, make changes, to um, demand changes from the people who you know are making these uh, reports and things? When are we going to say, look, that's not acceptable? And I don't think, and honestly, I, part of me feels like people just some people probably just don't even know where to begin my Mm. thing is if you make a loud enough noise you know um your voice will be heard you know i have proof with my own personal stuff you speak your mind you speak up if you're one of those voices you constantly keep speaking up yes it's gonna get in trouble Mm. um that ain't the type of trouble that i'm talking about us doing but we have to make Noise. There's not enough people making noise. There's a lot of people doing a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. There's not not enough noise. And I get the protests and things of that nature, but we gotta move on. What are they doing? Right. You know what I'm saying? It's it it's covered on the news. Okay, but now what? Right. You understand? I I don't. You come to me with something concrete. What it is? I want to because. Honestly, I'm not beat to be marking, marching in anyone's streets mm. make with a bullhorn and a goddamn sign saying, you know, Black Lives Matter and all of those other things. I'm not beat for all of that because you want to know why? That's just media coverage. I don't need to do it. I got Facebook Live. I could do whatever. I could t- put my picture out however I want. Mm-hmm. Let me know who the person up top is, and that's the person that <laughs> we, need to, we need to go to. that's we need to go. Point blank. That's mm-hmm. what it is. And honestly, you ain't got that much security. So if it's like 50 of us and five of y'all... Listen, yeah, we got yeah. you. We got some noise. To, y'all got to listen to us. Office hours are. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be there between. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he can't get out the back door. He can't get out the front door. He can't fit in the air duct. He got to come and talk to us. Yes. That's just, mm-hmm. you know. And we don't do enough of that. We don't. Um, we don't. We don't. At any. Thank you. We don't do any of that. And the thing about, and just like you said, it's really that simple. Like all of the all of the protests that are going on. Like I admire the people for their time and effort because, it's like you, it's not something I'm I'm willing to do. I I would much rather go see the person in charge, and we got to hold you accountable. One of my favorite movies is 
um, The Equalizer with Denzel Washington. Mm. And at the end of that movie, he goes and he gets the head of the snake. Mm -hmm. Most powerful line in the whole movie. I want the head of the snake. Mm -hmm. It's really not... All you have to do is find out where the head of the snake is and just go to the head of the snake. It might be difficult, but you'll get there. Right. You have to... What, what's the word? Persevere. Persevere. Press mm -hmm. on. You have to press on. Yeah. You have to. What, and the, I, I looked at... Um, I forget it was something about I must have been on Facebook or some social media site earlier. And what I saw, which was really, really disturbing to me, was there was another young kid who had written a letter in school saying that they were going to come back and kill the teach the ugly kids and the teachers. And I'm talking about this is a grade school kid. This is in high school. This is I want to say somewhere under the age of 12. Wow. Had written this letter. In pencil with words spelled wrong. Mm. I I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna get my guns and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna kill the ugly ass teachers and the ugly. How there's a lot of parenting that needs to be done the because be if parenting. your kids are having these thoughts, that maybe they're being exposed to a little bit too much. And why aren't you paying attention to what they're being exposed to? Like we know that you can't cover them 24 hours a day but there's and there's a real simple thing and i noticed this in my nieces and nephews their whole disposition changes once you ask them what they what they learned in school oh yes oh yes they the ch they could be in the foulest mood ask them, oh well, what'd you learn in school today mm -hmm. how was school it was good okay so tell me what you learned all of a sudden their entire attitude changes mm -hmm. oh let me tell you I asked my son, my oldest son, that today when I picked him up. How was I always ask him every day, how was school today? Mm -hmm. the, the youngest one, we'll talk about him later because he's okay. different. <laughs> but cause he's different. He moving out, by the way. Just letting y'all know he moving out. <laughs> um, but the oldest one, he gets in the back of the car. And I'm like, so Brandon, what did you, what, how was school today? What did you learn? That fool had the audacity to fix his lips and say nothing. We got to the stop sign. I refused to pull off. I said, so you mean to tell me I dropped you off to school at 825 this morning, and from 825 until 306, you didn't learn a thing? Oh, then I have to come to your classroom on Monday. No, Mom, mm -hmm. no, Mom. This is what we did. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's a little bit better. Cause yes. You, don't try to pull that with me. No. I'm, I'm, mm -mm, you gonna, no. And this is, people don't pay attention to their kids' e enough i got i mm -hmm. have ridiculous stories i could tell you one other time if you like but i'm just saying people don't pay attention yeah and i'm not trying to sound judgmental no it's the truth though and the i truth be a is the truth but um they need to pay attention um be a mother or father to your child they didn't ask to be here mm -hmm. they didn't ask to be here and if you don't think that you can Let's do something. Who that singing? What? <laughs> We're no trying idea. to get acquainted. Tanya be over there on some other I, stuff, but yeah. Was that you singing? Uh-uh. I'm trying to get my life right in the end. I'm talking to somebody in the news game. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I was just saying, you just got to pay attention. You should pay. I, I, I had that conversation with someone, too. Um, Why is it that... Our children are. We grew up di when we were growing up. Our next door neighbor had permission. Mm -hmm. There's not enough permission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. And then on top of having permission, when you got home, you got it twice. Punishment. You know, I I understand we had to evolve. However, mm -hmm. the core never should change right and yes yeah, people were having kids younger so because that's what someone said oh people were having children at a younger age and they were still babies themselves well the problem was they had their kids at a younger age and their parents didn't make them take the responsibility to raise their kids my mother told me flat out don't bring no babies in this house because mm. i raised mine and i'm not taking care of yours i was 40 
38 when I had my oldest one. And my mother was like, oh, yeah, I'll watch him. I'll do this, I'll do that. You go yeah. back to work. I'm like, man, I had that baby. That story changed. She did not babysit my son not one day. Are you serious? What? 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 No, 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 she d no, she did not. And I'm like, mommy, I, one, I haven't lived in your house in like over 20 years. So I'm not bringing any babies back home to you. And and if I am dropping them off, I'm, I'm going to get them. Wait, nope. No. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Wow. Yeah, no. That's funny. People should do that. Yeah, they really should. And, you know, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. There's a simple formula for raising kids. You raise kids with a lot of love and a little fear. If they don't fear anything, you are creating a very dangerous individual to be out in society. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one. Two things that you need to do with a child. Mm -hmm. One, you need to hug them. Yes. When you, when either they get home from school or you get home from work, hug your children. Yes. I'm not talking about burp them. Oh, God. No, grab them and hold their body. Love them. For a minute. Mm -hmm. Regardless of how uncomfortable they might think it is, regardless of how uncomfortable it might be for you. Hold, hug your children every day. The other thing is, ask them how their day was. Yes. And let them, and let them tell, I'm sorry. I'm, this, all of a sudden, this became a point. <laughs> Because I was two seconds for, like, in my head, I was here with it. Like, you need to. I'm sorry, so we're going to have to get new mics. Yeah. You know what? I already, I, I wish I could just hook my Bluetooth up to this whole situation and make it happen. But, yeah, we, we might have to work on that. Um, hug your kids. Take an interest in how their day was. That is five to ten minutes out of your life every yep. day. And it means everything. It'll mean everything to them. Everything. If you have a child who is not doing well in school, I guarantee you that that will change. Doing those two simple little things. You have to do it. You have to do it. These kids aren't raised um, today. And y'all know, I'm going to talk about the kids. Because, first of all, we're in a community center right here that's for the kids. So you, this, I do this. I'm glad that I do this here because it gives me an opportunity to be in a space to think about what's important, and that is pos posterity. Mm -hmm. It truly is. Um, we have to be. We have to be more mindful of the society that we are leaving to the children. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I y'all know I soapbox every now and then. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. I soapbox every now and then. So uh, there's what. There's actually something I want to know. I know that we um, running low on time, and I'm a. I think we are right. How much time we got? Oh snap! No, good. We're not running low on time. Oh okay. Good. Um. What I want to know, the like from your memory. I know we jump all over the place here. Y'all know how we get down. Um, it just dawned on me this question. What was? Because I I remember for me what it was. What was the song? that made you fall in love with house music? House? Or, you know, this genre of music that you list, that we listen to in the clubs, however it was when it started. I remember where I was, I remember what the song is, and I'll pull it up on my phone if you need me to, because um, I, I, I don't know what it was about that song. It just caught my attention so much. Okay. There is no one song. There's no one song. There is no one song. Okay. Back in my days of dancing at Sterling's, mm -hmm. when Jihad used to play there, mm -hmm. um, Lonely People. Club Lonely, yes. Um, <laughs> oh my God. When I used to hang out on Crescent Lane in Irvington, there's this song by this black tulip called Sing of Love. You've got to sing of love yes. in times of war. And it was the <laughs> vocals and everything was done. Because I'm a bass I'm a bass head. Ooh, what? Yeah, yeah. Oh god, Black Betty. <laughs> Just because they was getting you know, ugly with it. You know, yeah. Ugly yeah. with it. Um, 
um I can't t- there is no one, no one song. No, there really <laughs> is not. There really is not. French kiss. What? Listen. If you were a teenager when French Kiss came out, mm-hmm. that was where you got your grind on. All the way on. I'm telling you, these kids don't know nothing about this right Mm-mm. here. Because French Kiss was, oh, you grind all the way down to the ground and make it slow as the music slow down. Mm. And then as the music come back up, y'all can Listen, it was, it was a situation. Oh my god is what it was the, oh my good and 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 the music that we listened to then is so different from what kids listen to now that face like i often like in the the temp the uh the like the temperature of society or the temperature of the generation you could take the temperature by the music and who Right now, it's all about sex and drugs and getting high and yeah. You know, this generation it got a temperature, 105. They should be in a coma. Get some money. Yeah, like. And why am I sitting in the car at 48 years old, bopping to the damn track? I don't like the lyrics, but I'm getting it. All, right? I'm, I'm getting it all the way in. Yeah. And my kids in the back, you know, they only because we only listen to the clean versions. Yeah. Because you kind of gotta be on top of. Yeah, it. you do. You know, and even the clean versions are not. All that clean. So yeah, no, it's inappropriate, mm-hmm. and they're changing it. Mom, can we listen to this? No. no. One thing I like being an adult with no kids is I can <laughs> listen to all the dirty versions I want to, and I have to catch myself. Like if my mama in the car, I can't listen to none of my music. I got to turn on the radio because everything I'm listening to, everything with every curse in it that I like that sound nasty. Ow. But you know, no, like okay. Like I like Biggie, yeah, and Biggie got a lot of cussing in situations yeah. in it. Yes, and mm-hmm. you know, old school hip hop got some cussing in it. Love it. So I have to be mindful. Like even though there was message music still at the same time, or they were talking about situations in their everyday life, they weren't posers or tr- you know what I'm saying. Like right. it was a whole different situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I expose my kids to a lot of different music stuff that I grew up on and then I have to be open to listen to the stuff that they play now because I want to be aware Mm -hmm. you know um not that I want to be the cool mom I want to be their friend but I have to make sure that I want them to stay kids as long as they can stay kids if that Mm -hmm. makes any type of sense It's it's a hard job but I make sure that they honestly I think I I expose them more to stuff that I grew up with and you know other music I try to let them listen to that more so than what they listen to themselves. Mm. Sometimes they know songs, and I'm like, well, where did you hear that from? Because I don't play it in the car. How, where did you hear that from? I don't know where these kids are getting the music from. And then it's like, okay, well, they're at their friend's house. Or if they're getting in the van for aftercare, they have the radio playing, and, you know, and I'm like, oh, damn. You know, you got to rethink your whole situation then. Yeah. You know, but I try to expose them all the time. Let me tell you, I'm an earth, wind, and fire. What, what, what? 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 Listen. We, what? Listen. Between them and Stevie Wonder, hmm. my hmm. life is complete. All the way. But let me tell you, this song by the OJ is called Brandy. You know Brandy. I really miss yes. you. Yes, yes, yes. So what I did was to make my kids really like the song and pay attention to the lyrics because my oldest son's name is Brandon. I really miss you, Brandon. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And now when that song comes on, because I X them in the car, they're both back there singing Brandon. I love it. You you got to get creative with it. it. <laughs> I love it. And they listen to Adele. And they listen to Earth, Wind & Fire. And they listen to Stevie Wonder. And they know Evelyn Champagne King. My youngest, what? he's only six, will sing the whole song. What? Yes, indeed. Stephanie Mills. Get out of here. I, I love that, though. I love that. I love I to see to. little kids with uh, singing music that's older than them. I love it. Well, Mommy, Uh-oh. how do you know this song? Is this song, is this, is this song old? Yes, baby. Well, how, how, um... How old is this song? This song came out when I was your age. And they pause. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then they sit there and Jace will just 
gaze out the window. <laughs> and he's taking it all in because he loves to sing. My mm. youngest one loves to sing. And so he's singing whatever it is he's singing in his froggy voice. And then Brandon is trying to do all of the different <laughs> melodies. He's trying to do he's mm-hmm. trying to do the high note, the mid note. You know, he's trying to do it all. So we're in the car. We It's a group in the car. What? <laughs> Look, I own it. I, you know, I don't mean to be making a whole situation about my children, but I love my kids. No, it's, they should be music. a big part of your life, though. It, anybody, are. anybody who has a parent and you never hear about their kids, that's a problem. No, yeah. Everybody, I think that's a problem. Everybody knows the minions. Everybody knows <laughs> the minions. Heckle and Jekyll, Tom and Jerry. Yeah, and it's Costello. You get it? That's what they are. That's that's what it is. That's what it is. Oh, yeah. uh, Doc Martens. No, these are actually Skechers, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. These are the Martin. only pair of Skechers that I have that I like. Oh. All the rest of them with the heels on them are Doc Martens at home. Okay, yeah, because I was a that, So, person. listen. <laughs> I used to be able to twirl. <laughs> listen. Uh, <laughs> I used to be able to dance, my God. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Me too. I used to. That's what kills me is when it. people come up to me and be like, oh, yeah, you dance real good. Not anymore. Not anymore. Today, yeah, that's a used to. Yeah. I, I, I was, I used to be able to, unless I take a lot of stuff, and then I might be able to, you know. But other than that, for weeks. definitely. But I used to love that, like coming home from the shelter on Sunday morning. What we would go to and, IHOP. And when you wake up about four in the afternoon, yes. You all saw. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. And you just lay in bed and watch movies all, for the rest all of the day. All day. And then get ready for work on Monday. That's what I used to do. I used to love that. That soreness that made me, ah, yeah, I had a I good time. I used to time. party from Thursday to Sunday. Wow. Remember, it was, um, what was that damn club at Irvington? On Stuyvesant. Sanford, Sanford, Sanford Avenue. Cosmo? Cosmo. Thursday night. <laughs> You know, understand what I'm saying? Then it was uh, <coughs> Mirage. Oh. Then it was Sterling, um, and that was after the Zanzibar. Mm-hmm. You know, and then it was the Shelter on Saturday. Yeah. And then you go Cosmos again on Sunday. Wow. Wow. Yeah. The party. I was. Do your sick kids with it. like? Do your kids like to go out and dance? No. No. Thank God. They're young. They only nine and six. They can't go anywhere. Oh right. Mm-hmm. No, but like, do, uh, like, okay. I remember being young, and we would be at house parties as long as it was music. The kids would dance. We would dance. We had no problem. Just that, no, nobody had to tell us. We, I would used to be off in the corner at four years old dancing. I, I remember mm-hmm. being off, and I would leave everybody over there, mm-hmm. and I go dance in yeah. my corner. No, my oldest one is not that type of kid. He is his father's child through and through. Lord bless his soul. <laughs> but that young spirited one is mine. Oh. Lord God bless his soul. He don't need no. He is just always on. Oh wow. He doesn't need any permission to do anything. If the if the, if it hits him, he's doing it. Cartwheel and backflipping, you name it, he is doing it. He's always on dancing, singing, you name it, it's him. The other one, come on, Brandy, you gotta do it. You know, gotta kind of egg him on a little bit, but. No. No. And I don't trust people, so my kids won't be going everywhere because mm. I'll catch a case, mm-hmm. and I have a lot to lose. And you, that like you were saying earlier, when we were younger, the neighbor had permission mm-hmm. because we trusted the neighbor. Na- you know, your parents were, were able to trust the neighbor, mm-hmm. and I find it with for those of you who if you, y'all have heard me talk about where I was working before I was working at welfare and I used to, well not at welfare but with welfare clients and one of the saddest things I used to hear and I was actually talking to Tariq about this was when the young women would come in and they would be like um, no ain't nobody watching my baby I don't trust none of these people and I'd be like there's nobody in your life that you can trust to leave your kid with like that has got to be like the loneliest it's you know hard. what I'm saying? That's so difficult because I don't re- When we were little, they're all me and my brother and my sister all over to my aunt's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's how it was with us, too. Um, even now, if it wasn't for my aunt, Brenda, like, I don't know what I would do. Like, my sister, she, you know, she lives further away from me now, you know, or my dad. But those are my core people. Mm-hmm. You understand? My dad is 
in his 70s my aunt you know you know how do I leave my kids with somebody it was it was hard for me I there is um they have friends that they share this woman her boys are the same age as my sons Mm -hmm. and they're in the same class so I went over there met with the husband met you know met everybody and then I was able I was comfortable but um what really scared me was I have a cousin that came up from California Mm -hmm. and he told me about this app that you install on your phone and it lets you know where all the registered pedophiles are Mm -hmm. you pulled it up in your neighborhood and damn listen can't walk three feet. It's no. a pedophile living down the street. Like, really? I look at you yep. every day. You're a goddamn pedophile. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. But you know what, though? I don't know if that, because I know what you're talking about. A lot of times, they don't put what tier the person is, and the tier really does tell you whether the person is a pedophile or it's a sex offense that could have been misconstrued from something else. Because there's like four different levels to that Megan Law thing. Mm-hmm. And they sometimes they lump guys into it, and it may not necessarily, like, that may have been the plea out. I'm going to take this Megan's law so I don't got to go to jail, but it's community supervision for life. Like, it really doesn't tell you sometimes about who it is. But they're supposed to let you know when a certain level is in your neighborhood. Because I actually got a flyer one time. I was like, oh, shit, they actually do this. Like, I I had that was the first time, one and only time I got a flyer saying, you know, there's such and such has moved into the neighborhood. It's our duty to tell you, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. But um, just the fact that we can't do that anymore. I'm making sure, like, there's another young lady that I used to go to church with. Her daughter, I remember when her daughter was five. Mm-hmm. This was long before, excuse me, I even had kids. She's 21 now, whatever. She's like, oh, yeah, I'll watch the kids. I'll watch the kids. But because I know her since she was an itty-bitty herself, I would trust her to watch my kids. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's one of those. But because, and, and I think community-wise, people don't get out enough and speak to each other Mm -hmm. and things of that nature to get to know who your neighbors are Mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, And that would be a great big help. You know, where we live, my neighbors are Hispanic that live next door to me and they very, they barely speak English. But I allow my kids to go outside and play with them and they play well. They had a birthday party. Oh yeah, the kids can come over and play. The door is open. I'm good. We're Mm -hmm. right across the driveway because if anything happens, whatever, whatever. The house caught on fire. They have no place to go, including this damn pit bull. Everybody is in my living room. You understand what I'm saying? You get to know, and they still, again, don't speak very good English. Mm-hmm. But you you got to get to know who was going on. When my husband now was going through his thing in October, a week after his birthday, he mm-hmm. was on life support. I go to the damn hospital. There's a bunch of people in there that I know to live around me. The one person that came to our aid lives four doors down, and he saw, he would see Mark walking up and down the block. That's how he knew who we were. He stopped everything that he was doing and took him to the back, and if it wasn't for all of that, Mark wouldn't be here today. Wow. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. You got to get to know the people around you. You just don't pay attention to the cars and who's, you have to know the people. And, and just be, you know, and I did say I don't trust folk because I really don't. If I, if, I, if I can't spend any time with you, whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. It's not an automatic thing. It's something that you, we have to build up. We have to build. Basically, you're saying we got to build relationships. We have to build relationships. It's so important to build relationships. How many of us are Facebook friends? Right. Follow each other on Instagram. You can see mm-hmm. me walking down the street. I, I think that's her. I think, yeah. I think that's him. <laughs> but it won't won't even say hello. It does. It don't hurt. To, but you you stare at him just like this. Yeah, yeah. And see, and I'm one of those that you. If I see you staring at me, I'm like, how you hey. doing? Uh huh. Hey. I'm gonna make you speak. I'm gonna make you speak because you obviously either like something about me. Mm-hmm. You might think you know me, or something else. Mm-hmm. We are gonna get to the bottom of it right then and right there. <laughs> Right then and right there. You know what I'm saying? And when you do things like perform in front of people, it makes it a little bit worse because you have these strange people coming up to you who see you on Facebook or whatever all the time. And you're like, who the hell was that that just hugged me? 
Yeah, because I'm, I'm bad with names. Oh, Ooh, so bad with I'm names. so glad you brought that up because <laughs> if you see me out somewhere and you hug me or say what's up to me and I say, hey, uh, bruh, or what's up, sis? It's because I probably don't know your name and it's not for lack of trying. These, I only got seven left. I got seven brain cells left. And those need to last me to the end of my days. So I can't fill it with names all the time. I jollipize. If you say it to me 50, 11 times, eventually I'll catch on. But I'm terrible with names. I'm terrible. But if you don't have dialogue with these people on a regular basis, yeah, I'm not going to remember, remember at remember all. Your name. Yeah. If I'm not making an effort and you're not making an effort, I'm not going to remember your name. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? If I reach out to you and you don't reciprocate, I'm not going to remember your name. You know, it's, it's just that simple. You know, I want to know who you are. Mm -hmm. I, the people that I am FBFs with, um, a lot of them I have never met. Yeah. The ones that I have met, I can genuinely say that I actually have love for them. I don't know these people like that, mm -hmm. but because of the person that I am, I have love for them. I'm interested in their life. I'm interested in making sure, are you okay? I don't mm -hmm. mind sending a text message to say, are you okay? Sometimes I don't even have to do that because I read it, you know? But then sometimes it may put something out there and it may say, if I have your number, I'll send a text message real fast. Are you okay, sis? Mm -hmm. Bruh, what's going on? You good? Because we have to forge relationships. Not because I want something from you, because I really don't. Right. I really, I really, really don't. But I'm not going to turn down help, but I really don't want anything from you. I just want to be transparent with you. That's, mm -hmm. it. that's it. And that's free. How about that? How about that? So we're going to ask, I'm going to ask. Take it as a challenge for the week, for for the weekend or next week coming, to learn one of your neighbors' names. I'm not saying invite them over for martinis or nothing <laughs> like that. Just start speak. Pick one neighbor that you see often and just start speaking to them. Hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. And actually listen for their response though. Mm -hmm. Just try that and see how it works for you. And don't forget, hug your kids and ask them how their day was. And listen to how their day was. Let them get excited and explain it to you and do all the things that they were doing in school for you. Let them, let them redo the whole thing for you. Let them do that. Let them do that. Don't forget to ask them what they want to be. Yes. Yes. Because at a young age, they can change their minds. I'm sorry. I'm just talking. <laughs> they can change their minds. They change their minds often. Mm -hmm. When they are at this spongy age, they change their minds often. Not only ask them how their day was, what did you learn today? What do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. Listen to the stories that they tell you. It's very interesting. Oh, yeah. Very oh, yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to take time. So what you want to say to everybody before we get out of here? I really don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know what? Hello. Thank you all for listening to me. And give it, I'm going to say this to you, and they can listen. Okay. <laughs> I'm so silly. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, y'all know that I'm silly. Thank you very much for inviting me on the show. Oh. I, making me feel comfortable enough to divulge a little bit about myself. Thanks to everyone for tuning in, those of you that did. I saw how the number, it rose up and then it died back down. Maybe I wasn't interesting enough for them, but that's okay. Oh, no, that's not it. There's a bunch of people that's going to watch it later. Of course they are. Mm-hmm. Look, of course they are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Be sure. But yeah, no, I'm I'm really not as bad, you know. I'm Coco Radiant and Tony Bowen. A couple of different situations. Yeah. Of situations. <laughs> and look, if you've seen Coco sing, because that was the first time that I consciously remember seeing you perform at elevation at elevation when i had to uh, when i entered not like i somebody forced me to do it, but when i had the pleasure of introducing you and kesha mm -hmm. um for the and I, I didn't know who they were so i'm like who are they so i'm asking like uh dipping them like who are they with it and dips go oh, okay they right there okay ladies how y'all doing yada 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 da, 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 da. well y'all got up there saying <laughs> it's like why have i not heard y'all sing before well, you know, people don't play music. You know, sometimes eh, that's a whole different 
situation in itself. But, um, you know, you have to have exposure and your songs have to be played. And, you know, for whatever reason, they're not being played, you know, um, for myself, it, you know, I, I don't know. I've, I've been told different stories about, well, that one last song, Karma, the one that I did with Joe. You know, I heard different things about it. It wasn't that it was bad. Um, sometimes it wasn't, didn't tell a story enough or, you know, it just, whatever it was, you know, they just didn't play it that much. But the people that did play it, mm -hmm. they enjoyed it. And to my surprise, there was a lot of people that actually knew the words to the hook. So that made me feel super proud. Yeah. You know, Dawu, DJ Dawu, everybody knows him. He, I think, was one of the first DJs that gave me burn. And I was like, wow. You know, like, thank you. Mm -hmm. You know, it, people have to know your music. You ha they have to hear your music to know it. If you don't hear it or whatever, if they don't, if you, like you, you didn't know because you didn't hear your song. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear your song. So, you know, I can't, I'm, I'm not going to beg anybody to play it. I just hope that I put out good music and maybe this is the sound that they're looking for and they'll play it, you know. Whatever. I know that's what. Oh, so you're gonna have to send Tanya some music so she can play. Cause this isn't just like the talk show station. Okay. Like there's music that streams 24 hours. Oh. Okay. So you can go ahead and put that in rotation, and people in 232 countries oh, okay. can hear your song. Oh yeah, that that would be really really good. Then I won't have to pay for my Facebook boost when I put yeah, my music out. Cause yeah. I really put music out, yeah. <laughs> and I pay for my boost. Yes, I am one of those. I pay for my boost. I'm not ashamed to say it. I know. Yeah, you should. You, be. Know? you should. You have to invest in you. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I was told once before, like, no, 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 don't do that. We'll take care of all of that. I don't want you to do that. Mm. It wasn't a good thing, and right. it didn't make me feel really comfortable. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do it anymore because there was no return for me. Mm. You know, and so that just changed the whole dynamic of, yeah. you know. But this is not to bash anyone, you know, because I'm never going to call out a name unless I'm forced to. Mm -hmm. However... You know, we just change. <laughs> we just change the way we deal with people. You know, our relationship is forever changed. That's, That's yeah. What it is, you know. That's it. Now we only got an hour. I know. Do you know what though? I'm glad my show is an hour because I get to invite people back. Yes, when my music comes out. Yes, and oh. they, you know, there's always that opportunity. That's why I'm like, okay. I'll just keep it at an hour because I don't want to exhaust everybody in two hours and, you know. Yeah. No, nah, I don't want to do that. I want to be able to invite you back when you probably get your project's done and then we can talk about some more stuff. And, yeah. We can have one. Yeah. And cheese and crackers. Yeah. Because you don't do shit. Yeah. She has said that. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, thank, thank uh, Miss Tony Bowens <laughs> for joining <laughs> us. Now, now, if you get an opportunity... To listen to it on the website, you can hear sounds and effects and stuff. And you can and you. And it, 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 yeah, because on here, you know, this is just the interactive part where people, you know, jump into the chat room. But if everybody was on the site, there's a chat room there, but most people don't listen to it on the site. They, well, not the Facebook friends anyway. People in other countries watch it from the site. But, you know, for the Facebook family, who knows, you know. Okay. They mostly watch it here, but it's a different situation. And I always tell y'all it's a different situation. So, yeah, but uh, much love and appreciation. I thank you so, so much for coming. I had a wonderful time. I did too. I'm glad. And we will have to have you back. There will be no more surprises when I park my car. Oh, at all. No, um, yeah. That, um, Mr. Davis. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, just here to tell no. you I just love you to death. But there will be no more <laughs> coming for me on speakerphone. Home, okay, <laughs> the Copels. I will be a sensitive thug forever and a day. Okay, and I'm giving you face. Okay, mm. <laughs> just like that. And Shumaka. Yeah. Ooh, I swear <laughs> I didn't know that you were in Aries. I am so here for it. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. Thank you. I so am so glad that I got an explanation. Yeah, it makes sense now, right? I straight up asked and said, why y'all always making him have outbursts like that? Mm -hmm. Now I know. Yeah, that's where it comes from. It's that's, okay, though. Yeah. It's, it's, so, look, so the foolishness, look, I, I, I explain people, I explain Aries to people like this. We're like the most intelligent babies you ever want to meet. 
That's the best way I know how to explain. Because we're the babies of the Zodiac, but we are the most intelligent babies that you ever want to meet. Oh so you God. have to let us do it. But sometimes we might mess it up because that's what babies do. Yeah, that's what we do. And I have outbursts and things. But anyway... <laughs> We about to get out of here. I thank all of you guys for watching. Uh, I thank you for tuning in. Once much love again to my beautiful, beautiful guest, Miss Tony Bowens. To all of you guys who stayed in the chat room, much love and appreciation. I thank you guys for coming Ooh, through. Yeah. I think there's uh I'm not sure, but check my page Sadat, for events tonight. Howard. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead. Bruce. I can't see anybody. Oh, Bruce else. and you got in there. All of y'all, all of y'all, all we, thank y'all. y'all. we thank y'all, we thank Steve. y'all, we thank y'all. To everybody who was out there on the Ustream and everybody on GS Radio Nork, we thank you guys. Share the videos. That is the only way that we will keep this thing moving, is you guys have to share the videos. And for those of you who have walked up to me at some point and said, how come I haven't been on your show? Ask yourself this question, have you shared my video? So we'll just take it from there. Share my video and then we can have a conversation. Um, people in the 32 countries, um, hey, uh, we appreciate all of you guys for watching. We love you for listening. Everybody out there in the champagne room, because we are in the champagne room with Tanya Champagne. Much love and appreciation to you guys. I thank you guys for watching. I love you for listening, and we will see you right here next Devious Friday. Remember that the harder you fall, the higher you bounce. Remember that when you're tripping. So. Thank you.